Our next show, Easy Aces, I chose because I find Jane Ace is very funny. Easy Aces, a long-running American serial radio comedy, which ran from 1930 to 1945, was trademarked by the low-key drollery of creator and writer Goodman Ace and his wife Jane as an urbane, put-upon realtor and his malaprop-prone wife. I looked at malaprop in the dictionary and it means ridiculous misuse of words, especially through confusion caused by resemblance in sound. For example, Jane might say, well, you could have knocked me over with a fender. <laughs> and now, let me get my, wait a minute, I'm missing something here. And now our show, Easy Aces, Baby Food, original broadcast, May 8th, 1948. From New York City, the Columbia Broadcasting System, in cooperation with the United States Army and the United States Air Force Recruiting Service, presents the new Mr. Ace and Jane program, a weekly half-hour comedy series starting radio's original comedy couple, The Aces. Once again, the strains of Manhattan Serenade introduce the story of Mr. Ace and his wife, Jane. Tonight, Chapter 13, entitled, Mr. Ace is assigned to start an advertising campaign for a baby food, and that same day, Jane finds a year-old baby on her doorstep, and the baby inspires Mr. Ace to write a wonderful advertisement which makes money for everyone concerned, Mr. Ace, the baby food company, and the baby, or as Mr. Ace puts it. Uh, it was a three-corner deal. Tell you about this kid in just a minute. Before we, before we hear from the Aces, I'd like you to hear about the career that rates Aces high with men all over America. It's a career that offers a real chance for advancement and the opportunity to use your education and ability. It offers security in the future and good pay right now. It guarantees comradeship and the finest young men and gives you the chance to be socially useful at the same time. What is that career? It's one that's open to every qualified young man right now, a career in the United States Army or the United States Air Force. Go to your nearest recruiting office for full details about these outstanding careers with a future. And now, Mr. Ace, you were going to say something about an abandoned baby? Well, last week, they handed me a rather distasteful assignment at the advertising agency where I work. They asked me to prepare an advertising campaign for a brand new baby food to come out on the market. They sent me a sample of the stuff. It looked like strained moss. And I am sure no self-respecting baby in his right mind would ever walk into a restaurant and order the stuff. Waiter? I'm a self-respecting baby in my right mind, so I'll have the regular dinner with the Hungarian goulash. And instead of the strained moss, bring me a dill pickle. Uh, hey, kid. No substitutions. Why they picked me for this baby food campaign, I'll never know. Having never been a child myself, my background was all wrong. As a, as a child, children confused me. The games they played, cops and robbers, cowboys and Indians. Of course, back in my childhood, we played Whigs and Tories. I remember very few things about my youth, but most of all, I remember Mama. Mama, Mama used to say to me... Now, why don't you go out and play with the other boys? Why do you follow me around the house all day, writing down everything I say? What are you going to do, write a play or something? Also, I remember life with father. Why don't you be like Johnny? Why don't you go outdoors and play with Johnny? Johnny don't sit around the house all day. Why don't you be like Johnny? Years later, I returned to the scene of my childhood, and I wondered how Johnny was making out. 
I asked his mother, I said, whatever became of Johnny, Mrs. Dillinger? <laughs> uh, she told me, it seems Johnny was a case of arrested development. Uh, where was I? Oh yes, baby food. How'd I get mixed up with Dillinger? I was sitting around the house after dinner the other night trying to dream up some newspaper and magazine ads for this brand new baby food and Jane was helping me out. Dear, don't think so hard. You're getting furloughs in your brow. Well, this new account they wished on me would give anybody furloughs. Well, what is it, dear? Maybe I can help you. Two heads are better than none, they say. Hmm, well, I'll start using both of yours then. What is it about, dear? Uh, baby food. Baby food? Yes. Advertising. Advertising. A new product. A new product. Magazines. Magazines. Newspapers. Newspapers. Scalpel. Scalpel. Sponge. Sponge. Forceps. Forceps. Next. Next. Doing quite a business today, aren't we, nurse? What's going on here? What happened to the baby food? Ah, uh, look, uh, two heads. I've got to write some magazine and newspaper ads for a new baby food. Well, what good is that? Babies can't read? Well, look, Jane, you know that and I know that. But let's don't say anything to the client. He's spending a lot of money on this campaign. Don't tell him, okay? Oh, I won't, dear. You know me. Dumb's the word. That's the word. What's the name of the baby food? It has no name. I have to think of a name. Oh, well, that shouldn't be so hard. Now, let me see. Let's all take one minute out and try to think, huh? Okay, dear? Oh, oh yeah, I guess. I... All right. We're going to think. Come on now. On your mark. Get set. Think. Hmm. This is a hard one. It's a, really a stinkler, isn't it? Yes, it's a stinkler. Oh, wait a minute. I, I think I got it. You have? Yeah, it hit me in the face like a flash in the pan. Mm. Listen to this. What do all babies say? Um, waiter, I'll have the regular dinner with the Hungarian goulash. All babies say Gaga. Gaga? So why not name the baby food Gaga? And when the baby says it, their mothers will think they're asking for more baby food. Doesn't it to you? Uh, Gaga? Yes, now capital G-A, siphon, capital G-A. That siphon intrigues me, Jane. Oh, oh, don't you get it, dear? I don't want it. Well, well look, I'm a baby. Ga, ga. Go, go. Ga, ga. Gaga! What's the matter? Baby want a nice mush full of strained moss? <laughs> well, after a fitful night of tossing in my playpen, I was still short one idea for the baby food campaign. At the office the next morning, things were complicated by a weird phone call from Jane to my secretary, Miss Anderson. Miss Anderson is Jane's cousin. When I'm concentrating on a new idea, I ask her to be very quiet. When he's concentrated on a new idea, he asks me to be very quiet. I sit in deep thought, staring out of my office window, up at the sky. He thinks to high heaven. Mm -hmm. In the middle of all this, my boss, Mr. Norris, came in. <coughs> Mr. Ace, we have a visitor in town, Mr. Fisher, the man who manufactures that new baby food. Oh, he's here? <clears throat> well, maybe I should see him. I want to discuss the... Uh, I see him? You're going to entertain him while he's here. Oh, good. I'll show him the town. Maybe take him to a nightclub? Hey, you ought to like the store club. <laughs> Baby food, store club. Mm. Mm. Or Childs? Yes. Yes, sorry. Mr. Ace, this is no time for levity. 
There's a big account at stake here, and it's up to you to help us land it. Well, I'll try my best, Mr. Norris. Mr. Fisher is a family man, home type. I have already taken the liberty of inviting him to your house for dinner tonight. Tonight? I hope that's not too short a notice. Uh, oh, no. Call, I'll call Mrs. Ace and tell her that. Uh, answer that phone, Miss Anderson, please. I was just going to. Hello? Hello? Hello, uh, hello. is that you, Sally? Oh, is that you, Jane? Just fine. Is that Jane? I want to talk to her. Your husband wants to talk to you. Yes. Uh, oh, I want to talk to him, too. Uh, guess what, Sally? We had a blessed event. Really? When did it happen? Oh, just a minute ago. On the doorstep. A note was pinned on it. Well, of all things, I saw you just yesterday. You didn't say a thing about it. How are you feeling? Oh, wonderful and excited, of course. Well, naturally. Oh, let me talk to him. But, but don't tell him about it. I want to surprise him. Oh, sure. Surprise him? Doesn't he know about it? No, it happened after he left the house. Well, let me talk to him, Sally. Give me the phone, will you, Miss Anderson? What are you gabbing about? I'd better not say. Maybe I didn't hear it correctly. And I don't want to get your hopes up for nothing. Talk, talk, talk. Excuse me, Mr. Norris. Hello, Jane. Dear, this is Jane. I know, I know. Guess what? What? Look, Jane, I was just going to call you. I've invited Mr. Fisher, the baby food man, out to the house for dinner tonight. Uh, dear, a, a blessed event. It, it just... It... Uh, well, I'm hoping it will be. Have a nice dinner ready, will you? We got a baby! A real live year old baby! See you tonight, Jane. I'll, I'll bring him about six o'clock. Uh, but dear... So long, Jane. There you are, Mr. Norris. It's all arranged. Now, will Mr. Fisher come here, or do I go over to the baby? What's that, Mr. Ace? Did she say baby? Oh, then I did hear correctly. Congratulations, Mr. Ace. What's that? You have a baby? Fine, nice timing, Mr. Ace. Yes, it could have happened at a more opportune time. This will really clinch our deal with Mr. Fisher's baby food. Mr. Ace, congratulations again. I'm going to write an inter-office memo for the other men in our office and organization citing you as an example of closer cooperation. Isn't that awful? What, what has she done now? What has she done? Oh, really now, Mr. Ace? Yes, I know what you're thinking. The whole thing's too coincidental. My working on a baby food account and Jane finding a baby the same day. Well, if you don't believe that part, I know you won't believe the rest of this story. So, uh, it's been charming. See you next week, huh? But for those of you who want to stick around, I can tell you that while I was collecting my wits at the office, Jane had invited a godfather over to the house for the baby, Ken Roberts, our next door neighbor. He's a radio announcer. You hear him doing commercials all the time. I heard him the other night doing a commercial for a correspondence school. He said something like, uh, uh, Friends, a little knowledge is a dangerous thing. Enroll in our school. Get a little knowledge. Live dangerously. What a salesman. Parents, parents, does your child say, I ain't got? Well, get her some. That's Ken Roberts. And he and Jane are cooing over this newly found infant. Ken, did you ever see anything as gorgeous as he is? He's as pretty as a fixture. Hello there, boy. Jane, what a baby. Let's have a smile. Smile. Come on. Smile. Smile! I am smiling. No, Jane, I meant the baby. Oh, Ken, you should have seen him smile when I picked him up from the doorstep. Really? Did he whimper? Not a whimp. 
Well, uh, are you going to keep him, Jane? Oh, keep him? Of course I'm going to keep him. But isn't it the law that you have to report it? No, I, I think the law is if nobody calls for him in 30 days, he's mine. <laughs> Oh, little Ken, he likes that. He says, that's right, 30 days. 30 days, old boy. 30 days has September, and no wonder. Oh, I think he's talking, Ken, doesn't it to you? Oh, he can't talk, Jane. The note said he was only a year old. What else did it say, Jane? Oh, it, it said, I'm a year old, please take care of me. And such a nice little handwriting he's got, too. <laughs> oh, now, Jane, the baby didn't write the note. Oh, I, I know. I'm just a proud mother talking, Ken. Oh, I wonder who that is. Maybe it's somebody calling for him. Oh, I hope not. Well, I better go see, huh? Now, you watch him now, Ken. Oh, I'm, I'm watching. Uh, hi there, nature boy. <laughs> Yes, uh, what is it, please? I beg your pardon, but could you use a good housemaid? A housemaid? Yes, I'll work for very little. Just, just room and board and will be enough. I'm really desperate. I need work. Well, well, come in, come in. Oh, thank you. A housemaid. Yes, we might need one at that. I, I just got an addition to the family. Uh, do you mind babies in the family? Oh, no, not at all. You won't? Well, if I got a maid, I'd want her to mind the baby. Oh, I'll mind the baby. Of course I will. Oh, oh well, uh, uh, that's more like it. Isn't it cute? Look. Oh, it's beautiful. <laughs> oh, I just love to work here, and I'll be so grateful for the chance. Well, I think maybe I will. What do you think, Ken? Well, now that that you have this child, Jane. It makes uh, yes, well, um, uh, uh, what is your name, miss? Agnes. Uh, Agnes Brown. All right, Agnes. When do you want to start? Right now. I'll start right now. Just, just show me where my room is. Well, we have a spare room. It's right in there. I'll, I'll show you. Here it is. Uh, now, you go right in and take off your coat, and you can start right away. And if you like it here, then you... you know. Oh, I know I will. And as for the baby, don't worry. I'll treat it as if it were my own. Oh, that's sweet. Now, now I'll uh, go right in, Agnes, and, and come out as soon as you can. Oh, thank you. I'm ever so grateful. <sighs> my goodness, Ken, some excitement. A maid and, and this darling little baby. <laughs> yes, you are. Here, let me lift you up. Oops, so crazy. You know, Jane, Jane, that girl Agnes, she didn't look like a maid, did she? Oh, Ken, exactly what I was thinking. You know, Ken, if this was one of those radio serials, I'd swear this baby was left on the doorstep by Agnes, and then she came to get a job here as a maid so she'd be near her baby. You know those stories. Yeah, that corny stuff. Yeah, that corny stuff. <laughs> yeah, they, they do it all the time. <laughs> <laughs> oh, look, even he's laughing at the radio. You know, someday he'll grow up to be a studio audience. <laughs> mm, well, Jane was making like Mrs. Whistler and wondering what to send herself for Mother's Day, I was sitting at the office trying to figure out what hit me. And Miss Anderson was heckling me from the sidelines. As Jane's cousin, as well as your secretary, I think I'm entitled to a fair explanation of this baby business. Well, I don't know any more about it than you do. Oh, come now. I know the facts of life. You do? Well, I wish you'd explain them to me. Well, the bees carry the pollen from the... No, 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 no. Isn't that awful? Look, will you do me a favor? Call the house. Get Jane on the phone. I gotta talk to her. I should hope you would. Uh, fish are coming to dinner and she calls me up with this baby business. What puzzles me most is that that I saw Jane just yesterday. She didn't say a word about. 
Jane? Yes, is that you, Sally? Jane, what goes on there? As your cousin, I demand... Oh, Miss Anderson, will you give me that phone? Let me talk to her. Hello, Jane. Is that you, dear? Jane, what happened, dear? What's this about a baby? I told you I found a baby on the doorstep with a note pinned on it. Found it? It said, I'm a year old. Please take care of me. And guess what else? I just hired a maid to look after him. A maid? Yes, and she came to the door and asked for a job, so I took her. For no money, she just wants room and board, and, and she'll look after the baby. Oh, but you're not thinking of keeping that baby. And why not, if I may be so cold? <laughs> because you're not. I'm going to report it to the police. Stool pigeon. Stool pigeon? What are you talking about? You wait till you come home tonight and see him. But I'm having Mr. Fisher tonight for dinner. It's very important if I lose this baby food account. But, but dear, if Mr. Fisher sees we have a baby, he won't mind. He makes baby food. I'll tell him our baby eats nothing but his baby food. Hey, wait a minute. That's an idea. I can report it after I get the account. Jane? Yes, Father? Uh, Jane, I'll stop that, will you? Jane, take care of that kid, and listen now, not a word to Mr. Fisher that it isn't ours. I know, dear. Strictly entre new and me. Yes, strictly entre new and me. Oh, he's such a beautiful baby, dear. That's good. Oh, he looks like he understands everything I'm saying right to his nose. Honestly, dear, he's almost human. <laughs> almost, yes, that's fine, Jane. So long. Now you be careful. Don't walk up any stairs. No, oh, what am I saying? <clears throat> yes, I know it was a shabby thing to do, making a huckster out of a year old baby. Shows you how a man in the advertising business will sell a strange kid's birthright for a mess of strained pottage. Well, late that afternoon, Jane and Ken were still cooing over the baby, waiting for me to come home. And this little piggy went to the A&P, and this little piggy went to the Safeway. <laughs> oh, he likes that story best, don't you, little fella? All right, Uncle Ken, it's your turn again. Gee, I, I don't know any more stories, Jane. I, I told him everyone I... Oh, wait, I'll read him this commercial. Oh, Ken, you wouldn't dare. Why not? Why not? He's had a whole afternoon of entertainment. Now comes time for a commercial. Well, maybe you're right, Ken. Sooner or later, he's got to learn he can't go through life having a good time without stopping to listen to a commercial. And it's better he learns it from us than from some strange network. All right, baby, Uncle Ken will now read a commercial. Got a minute or two for interesting questions for two of them? What is the largest adult education program in the world today? What program is doing more than any other in history to raise the educational level of the young men of our nation? Two interesting questions. Only one answer. The education program of the United States Army and the United States Air Force. Yes, thanks to that program, today's soldiers and airmen are about the best educated in history. Just listen to these figures. 50,000 soldiers in organized classes at military installations. 5,000 in civilian schools with tuition mostly paid by the Army. 10,000 taking college courses mostly paid for by the Army. 145,000 studying self-teaching courses. 5,000 per month qualifying for high school diplomas or equivalency certificates. That's a grand total of 220,000 young men now enrolled in the Army and Air Force education program. Proof that today, an Army man is a well-educated man. And remember, too, that in the Army, a man earns what he learns. For the young man who wants to continue his education, who wants security, good pay, a chance for advancement, and many other benefits, enlistment in the United States Army is the answer. See your nearest recruiting office for full details about an Army career, America's outstanding career with a future. Jane, I'm home. Oh, look who's here, baby. 
here's your daddy. Look, dear, did you ever see such a cute baby? Now, say hello to him, dear. Uh, hi, babe. <laughs> oh. oh, fine, fine. Dear, what did you do to him? I didn't do anything. He made the baby cry, Jane. I did not. Oh, don't cry, baby. It's only your father. Look, he scared the little fella. Ken, why don't you go home? Mrs. Ace, what happened? Is something wrong? What made the baby cry? Mr. Ace came home. Yeah, oh, fine. Maybe I shouldn't have come home. Oh, oh, well, this is my husband, Agnes. How do you do? Oh, how do you do? Mrs. Ace, I must insist on putting the baby to bed. It's way past its bedtime. No, oh, wait just a minute, um, Agnes. There's a man coming to dinner, Mr. Fisher. I want him to see the child, and as soon as he sees it, you take it in and put it to bed. Ah, there he is now. I'll go, Jane. Mrs. Ace, it's way past the baby's bedtime. Oh, a few more minutes won't hurt anything, Agnes. Well, come in, Mr. Fisher. Good evening. Come right in. Have trouble finding us? No, not at all. Good, good. Right in here, Mr. Fisher. Here we are. Oh, this is my wife, Jane. This is Mr. Fisher. I'm glad to know you, Mrs. Ace. Oh, please to meet your acquaintance. And this is Mr. Roberts, who is just going home, Mr. Fisher. Glad to know you. How do you do? Oh, ho, ho, what a beautiful child. Yes. Now say hello to Mr. Fisher, baby. Kaka. Well, well, well. What are you trying to say? Well, he said, Gaga. Now, you see, dear, all babies say Gaga. Yes. Gaga. Gaga to you, young man. I wonder what babies want when they say Gaga. Well, if Gaga was the name of your baby food, Mr. Fisher, then their mothers would think that they were asking for that. Hmm. Gaga... Baby food. Yes. Babies go gaga over gaga. Gaga! <laughs> Look at the little fella. He likes it. Mr. Ace, there's our advertising campaign. You mean you like that? Mrs. Ace, I think the baby should be put to bed now. Um, yes, Agnes, that's the idea. Take him in. Oh, so soon? We've just met. Well, 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 we only kept him up, Mr. Fisher, because Mr. Ace thought that he'd have a better chance of selling you this whole thing. Uh, Jane, all Jane, please. <coughs> uh, Agnes, put him to bed. Oh, well, come on, Ken. We'll all go watch Agnes put our little boy to bed. Off to bed we go. Now, you let me carry him in. Oh, that's okay, Mrs. Mrs. Ace. I'll carry him. Oh, yes, Ragman's coming. Hmm, Ragman's coming. Great. Well, Mr. Ace, congratulations. He's a fine, husky young man. Looks just like you, too. Like me? <laughs> oh, no. After all, I wear glasses, and... <laughs> Here's an idea, Mr. Ace. How about using your son's picture on the label? My son? I'll give you a thousand dollars for the use of his picture. A thousand dollars? Well, the money has nothing to do with your advertising agency. It's for the baby's mother. In fact, I'll make the check out to Ms. Ace if she'll sign a release for, for whatever. Why, here she is. Is your son asleep, Mrs. Ace? Oh, yes, he is. He fell asleep the minute we undressed her. She? Mrs. Ace, I want you to sign... I want you to sign this paper for your son's picture. She? What are you talking about, Jane? Yeah, sorry, dear, slight mistake. What? <laughs> well, we just found out he's a girl. What's going on here? Oh, uh, I knew something like this was gonna happen. What happened? Well, well, the baby isn't ours. Mrs. Ace found him on the doorstep today. What? Yes. Found her, dear, wrong pants. Uh, wrong, wrong pants, yes. I wish the whole thing were all past. Mrs. Ace, don't tell me that baby there isn't yours. 
All right. Oh, fine. Well, look, Mr. Fisher, that shouldn't make any difference. You could still use the baby's picture on your label. And be sued by the baby's mother? Oh, no. I'm willing to pay $1,000 to the baby's mother for the use of the picture. But who will I give it to? You can give it to me, Mr. Fisher. What? Agnes! Wait a minute. Are you... You mean that baby is... She, she's mine. I left her on your doorstep, Mrs. A. I'm her mother. You? Then what am I? Oh, Jane, quiet, please. Agnes, how about your husband? Where is he? Oh, John went out west to make us a home. He, he couldn't take me and the baby. He's having a very hard time, and, and this is my chance to join him. I'll take that check, Mr. Fisher. Well... If you're the baby's mother and you're willing to sign a release for the use of the child's picture... Oh, I will. I will anything. Very well. You'll be at Mr. Ace's office in the morning, and we'll make out the release. And the money's yours. Oh, thank you very much. You've given me new hope. The will to go on. Then it's all settled. Uh, but Mr. Fisher, will Agnes go out west to meet her husband? And will she take the baby with her? And if she takes the baby with her, what about the picture of the baby on the label? And what about Agnes's husband? Will he be waiting when she gets there? And will Mr. Ace get the advertising account? Tune in tomorrow at this same time. Ah, uh, Jane, please, don't, don't get carried away. Mrs. Ace, I want to thank you, and you too, Mr. Ace, for everything. John and I will be forever grateful. Oh, it's nothing. Things like this happen every 15 minutes, Monday through Friday. <laughs> uh, things like, a, well, you know, the kind of things I mean. <laughs> Well, yesterday, when we left the Aces, Jane and Mr. Ace, with heavy heart, had bid a sad farewell to the little stranger they had come both, both come to love, except Mr. Ace. And Agnes had taken the thousand dollars offered her by Mr. Fisher for the use of her son's picture, who turned out to be her daughter, and who Jane pretended was her own son, but was really the daughter of Agnes, the unfortunate woman who pretended to be a maid because her husband John although he had come out of the war as a hero, had been unable to pick up the tattered remnants of his life or anything else. And he had been advised by kindly old Dr. Fisher, no relation to Mr. Fisher, the baby food tycoon, who spells his name with a C, but who is a kindly old Dr. Heinrich Fisher, famous Viennese psychoanalyst, who, after a brief stay in New York where he met John, was hired by kindly old 20th Century Fox as a technical advisor on their next picture for Ingrid Bergman, currently appearing in the Arch of Triumph with Charles Boyer, whom you will remember for his brilliant performance in Algiers with Hedy Lamarr, who was brought to the attention of Hollywood by her success in the foreign picture Ecstasy, which was produced in Vienna, the home of Dr. Heinrich Fischer, a kindly old doctor who advised John to go west and make a home for Agnes and the child John had never seen, because Agnes was always leaving it around on doorsteps. And as we look in on the aces today, we find nobody home. She speaks. Dear, why don't you be more like John? John didn't sit around the house all day. John went out west. Okay, Mrs. Dillinger, this is where I came in. All my life, why don't I be like John? John! In, in just a moment, I'll give you the title of chapter 14 in the story of Mr. Ace and Jane. Now I want to now I want to talk directly to all you young men who are graduating from high school this year. Just what are your plans for the future? Do you want to continue your education? Or do you want to start working and earning your own way? Or perhaps you're a young man who wants adventure and travel. Well, whatever type of career you want can be yours in the United States Army or the United States Air Force. Being an Army or Air Force man today, you'll be a better man tomorrow. So better get to your nearest recruiting office right away to make your career one with a future.
Next week, Mr. Ace and Jane will bring you chapter 14, entitled, Jane Takes Up Astrology and Learns to Her Amazement that, according to the star she was born under, she's been married to the wrong man. And, and Mr. Ace, after trying in vain to persuade her it hasn't been a mistake, packs up and leaves home. Or as Mr. Ace puts it, how Capricorny can you get? Good night. Me too. Good night. This is CBS, the Columbia Broadcasting System. The cast of Easy Ace's Baby Food wore the droll husband, Mr. Ace, played by Herb Thompson. His funny wife, Jane, who had a blessed event without being pregnant, was played by Donna Amesmeyer. The announcer promoting the Air Force and Army was played by Walt Kovalik. Ms. Anderson, the confused secretary of Mr. Ace, and the mama were played by Nell Brennan. <laughs> Mr. Norris, the humorless boss, and the father who wanted his son to be more like Johnny was played by Roger Morris. <laughs> Agnes, the baby's real mother, the girl, and the Gaga Baby Food Baby were all played by Ellie Babka. <laughs> Mr. Fisher, spelled with a C, and the manufacturer of the baby food was played by Andre Dixon. <laughs> all of our excellent sound effects were handled by Marty McNulty. Thanks to our audiovisual crew, that's uh, Lorenzo Cordova and Michael Froschauer. <laughs> Next month is December, and on the third Friday of the month, December 20th at 7.30, our next show will be under the capable direction of John V. Gelsimino. John can't, couldn't be here tonight, but Ellie's going to tell you more about it. Um, John had sent me an email, and he's busy at school, and he says that he's so busy getting ready for next month's show, he cannot be here tonight, <laughs> but I know better. And he wanted you to know that we have two wonderful stories that we will present to you the Friday before Christmas. First, we will present A Great Gildersleeve from 1948. Throckmorton P. Gildersleeve hopes to have a simple Christmas with the family, but surprise, surprise, it's not looking that way. And in the second show, we will present a Christmas classic from Dragnet. The statue of the infant Jesus is missing from the Mission Church, and Joe Friday is on the case in The Big Little Jesus. Please make plans to join us five days before Christmas, and it's coming soon, isn't it? Friday, December 20th, and we promise to get you in the right mood for the holiday season, especially because we just found out that the Riverside Township Community Band will also play before our show, so do come early and hear it. We may have a couple surprises as well, so tell your friends, tell your family, and we look forward to seeing you at 7.30, December 20th. Thank you, Ellie. Please take a moment next week to remind yourselves of everything you're thankful for. One thing the Riverside Township radio players are thankful for is the support by Supervisor Richard Tusher and the trustees of River Riverside Township. Thank you all for coming tonight. See you next month on December 20th.